King is back. I know you big guys have been asking, Rick, you took a hiatus before. Now you're taking a second hiatus? Why have you been gone so long? What's the reviews? Do you have any more reviews? Why are you so hot? Where's the dragons? Where's this? Where's that? I, I get it. I understand. I hear you guys. Life is lifing. And everybody understands when life lifes, you can't really do the things you want in life when life is lifing. Huh? That's essentially what's going on. There's a lot of things behind the scenes where I'm trying to catch up and do stuff. I was in California a month ago and yeah, it's been a hectic couple months, but I'm back. With that being said, today is a triple review of today's cigar, which is the Davidoff Grand Cru Diademas Pinas. Originally, currently, if you do want content that I'm a part of and you've been missing me, I've been extremely active on Source of Assassin's channel, which either I'm on his lives once in the blue moon or the podcast that he uploads every Sunday, which is what the hell are we smoking? That's something I've been a part of. So if you want or miss content that includes me, go in the description, go on Source of Assassin's channel. And then you will see every Sunday, you will see a podcast that me and my friend Eric are co-hosts on while Tony being the main host. Mention those names because this is a triple review. Triple reviews meaning I'm one of three people reviewing the cigars. So as this video dropped at 12 p.m. on Friday, there's two other channels that also reviewed it, which is Thoughts of Assassin and Midnight Cigars. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! All of us could have the totally same reaction to the cigar, but all three of us could have polar opposites. I don't know how you could have a three-way opposites. Maybe one loved it, one hated it, and one's neutral. That is opposite. Being neutral compared to love is opposite, and hating something that you love is opposite. But being neutral when someone else hates it, that's also opposite because the person hates it, you're neutral, you don't, you, you're indifferent. So yeah, you never know. Maybe I'm gonna feel neutral about the cigar. Maybe Tony will love it because I thought I was a doubt of whore. Uh, he surpasses me. I'm Vegeta, he's Goku when it comes to Davidoff. Then you have Eric who hates everything. But who knows, maybe Eric will love the cigar. Me feeling neutral and Tony hating it. You would have known. Unless you go in the description and click on Eric's channel, which is Midnight Cigars, and check his review on this cigar. And I'm also checking out Tony's review on the cigar. First of all, this is the Grand Cru Diademas Pinas by Davidoff. This is a six and three fourth by 50 cigar. The cigar shape will be considered a figurado. The last bit of information is that the wrapper is Ecuadorian, the filler, is Dominican, and then the binder is Dominican. And I guess this is also important if you want to try this out. MSRP of the cigar is $57. I'm not liking the prices of the latest Davidoff installments. The Maduros were 50 plus. Uh, Year of the Dragon were 59 and $89. This is 57. You're hurting my pockets, Davidoff. I'm not gonna stop buying you, but I'm just saying you're hurting my pockets. It hurts a lot, tremendously, both emotionally and financially. And then I guess the tiny bit of information too is this cigar does come in a box of 10. 
meaning the box is worth 570. That's basically it. Actually, no, I'm lying to you. One small thing that I saw with details with the filler is that inside this is a tobacco that was aged in a wine cast. And wine as in thing you drink, not wine as in complaining. A wine cast barrel. That's what one of these fillers were aged in. So apparently with the cigar, you're supposed to taste a little bit of wine in this, or at least a cherry or something in the fruity category. That's interesting. I'm going to shut up. I'm going to cut this. The wrapper is a little bit soft. There's not really much aroma on the actual wrapper. Typically, when there's a powerful scent on a wrapper, it tends to be kind of either meh or okay. And the ones that tend to have no scent usually are bombs. And I mean that in a good way. There's a little bit of this like fruity, like a dusty smell. It's like when you go to your grandma's house and she has those leather couches. You have this like very slight scent. There's like this old leathery. It's, it's most aged. All right. Okay, it's very fruity and nutty on the dry. A little bit floral. A little bit hay. Interesting so far. You know what time it is. Ooh. I'm back at it. I'm a pro again. Creamy. Peppery. Woodsy. A little bit of like this hay floral. I get like a peanut butter. Yeah, the peanut butter I'm getting is more like along the lines of the ones you get in, not like in Reese's. But like these chocolate cookies you would get, like the store brand of the peanut butter fudge cookies of Walmart. Or even the Keebler ones. Keebler used to have peanut butter chocolate cookies. I kind of get like that peanut butter taste on my palate. The draw is not bad. It's almost like a straw. It's not tight. It's not much resistance. The wrapper is slightly oily. Looks a tad bit dry, though. Very veiny. You would think his name is Tyrone. Anyways, uh, yeah, very veiny. Not the prettiest wrapper, but definitely nice. A little bumpy, a little rough on the edges. This is like earthiness to it. Woo! The spice is definitely coming in. That's definitely more like white pepper. It just caught me off guard. It's not unpleasant. 
it was that strong amount of pepper but it just took me off guard because it was very mild in the very first beginning puffs but since it is a figurado uh i guess you could say the nip in the the foot was concealing most of its content now that the nip is gone i'm getting more of the profile Yeah, that earth is coming out a little bit more. More like a mushroom earth. It's not meaty. But you would think it's meaty. So whenever I think of something that tastes a little bit like meat that's not meat, I think of mushroom. And the white paper kind of lingers. I actually feel a little bit of a, not really a disturbance, but that's a long finish when it comes to the white pepper. And I feel it even after I breathe. Even a little bit. Chocolate powder? It's not really like creamy chocolate. But it's like this. It's like when you get like dark chocolate and it's like a little bit of like a bitterness to the chocolate. Like with either like 70% cocoa or 75% like the ones from the Lindell, Lindelt, whatever the company is called. The one that has the percentage of cocoa. Whenever you start eating the dark chocolate, you have a little bitterness afterwards. But it's also like bittersweet. That's what I'm getting with this. I'm getting a little bit of floral, a little bit of that mushroom, a little bit of that dark chocolate or some type of powdery chocolate or cocoa. It definitely dances with your palate. I'm going to continue focusing on this. I'll see you guys on the second third. A few inches later. I'm at this part of the cigar. Basically, second third. And definitely is changing. Way more floral. You have the bits of hay. You have this cherry element to it. You definitely tell where the wine cast came in. The first third was like very, I don't know, it's not really memorable. This is more peppery. This is more sweeter, floral, fruity, a little bit oaky. It's definitely a game changer when it comes to the second third. That mushroom is still there, like earthy mushroom. It's very light now, not as intense. It's starting to get amped up a little bit. That white pepper is still coming out a little bit more stronger in the second, third. Like I feel it in the retro, but it's pretty tasty. Very sweet. This is like perfect for a dessert. Or if you are drinking a wine, I think this will actually pair very good with the wine. It's almost like it's salty too. Let's take a look the ash all right and go a little closer very grayish white while the outskirts being gray the middle section is basically white well to the naked eye as with comes to the camera it makes it more wider than usual this is more grayish than it is white so if you are a fan of peppery cigars, you actually might like this. Again, it's very floral, very sweet, very fruity, very cherry-like. I'm getting that cherry element that they tease when you look up the cigar's information. I tend to not want to get anything spoiled with Davidoff. You get images like this. This image gives you the details of like the rapid binder filler. But on the other side, on this side, it gives you the rapid binder filler. But on this side, it gets you the taste notes. But luckily, this time it's only singular notes. Obviously, it's not just a one dimensional cigar. There's other elements to the taste notes. So at least I didn't get fully ruined. 
but I'm gathering other stuff with it as well that's quite enjoyable. That little cocoa-ness that I was getting before, the little chocolate, powder chocolate notes, gone. And it's just now overwhelming with just floralness. With this very fruity floral, light oaky, slight mushroomy, light salty taste. I feel like there's also like a little bit of baking spices in here. Maybe nutmeg, cinnamon, maybe both. This is definitely, this gives me dessert. But that's going to conclude the second third of my review of the cigar. I'll see you guys in the last third. Two hours later. I'm at the final third of the cigar. And before even approaching the final third, I was getting like a little bit of coffee notes, which is out of nowhere. Which was out of nowhere. It was a combination of coffee and chocolate. It was like, I feel like this cigar had like four transitions. Now, as I'm entering the last third, peanut butter I was getting before, it's coming out again. But basically what I was getting in the first third, I'm getting now, but now with more hints of leather, that peanut butter coming out a little more stronger. And a little bit of oats. Maybe like oatmeal, cereal, something in that combination. So, yeah, so don't you just copy and paste the first third with what I just added now. That hay is back. It's not as floral as before. It's a very interesting blend. I was enjoying that fruitiness, the very sweetness. Now it came back to like this oatmeal style breakfast. Different. Smoke output is good. White pepper never left. You still have that white pepper coming in. Baking spice is still there. Well, oh, it made a little comeback. Baking spice kind of went away. Not really went away, but it wasn't as prominent as it was in the second third. You had the little hints of nutmeg or cinnamon in the second third. Now it's coming back. So it was like you had breakfast and you had like a little fruit bowl and then you're going back to your breakfast. That's what the cigar is. The strength is up and up a little bit. It went from a medium to full because low key, I could feel the nicotine. And I had a decent lunch before doing this review. That earthiness is still there. That mushroom. I don't know. It's a very interesting smoke. But I think I'm going to wrap up the review itself. This is the last third. I'm already getting everything I need from the last third. And the overall experience of the cigar was fair. Do I believe this is $57? No. Like I'm, I'm willing to spend like maybe 25, 30 bucks because it's a devil off name. Pigalado, the taste notes, but it's pleasant. If I had a cup of wine, it would have been perfect with this. But with me pairing it with water so I won't mess up my taste buds, it's all, it's, it's all right. Let's do appearance with the ash, the figurado. The cigar was kind of bumpy and it looked dry. Even though it was not drying, it had like a dry look. And you can't really say much with the band work. It's the same thing with all Davidoff. So it's like, it's nothing really phenomenal when it comes to appearance. Uh, the Figurado definitely looked cool. When it comes to the appearance, I'm going to give it a six. It was very bumpy. It seemed maybe rushed. Uh, some parts felt hollow when it comes to the squeeze test. Uh, like even like right now, just it's not really underfilled. Maybe it's slight underfilling with the vein. You know, would it be very veiny, very bumpy? Their appearance, I'm gonna give it a six. The construction, 
The jaw was really good. Basically, no resistance. Very smooth. Retro spoke output. Everything about it was spectacular. Uh, it never really canoed. There was no tunnel. There's no tunnels in it. It's a solid constructed cigar. But also felt a little bit underfilled. And it kind of just felt weird with the bumpiness, which goes back to the appearance. So with the construction, I'm going to give it a seven. With the taste notes. I mean, it's not something for me that, like, yes, I was pleasantly surprised with the whole coffee note and chocolatey and the floral and all this type of stuff. But I feel like it was a little bit. I don't know. It felt overwhelming. At the same time, underwhelming. You get that dank earthiness, mushroom, white pepper, nutmeg or cinnamon, some baking spice. There's oatmeal. There's snow in there with a little bit of the finish with graham cracker. I feel like it's too much for the taste. And it really wasn't my true cup of tea. So I'm going to give this cigar a six and a half for taste notes. I'm not going to go ahead and do the math of everything. You're going to see the overall score on top of Charmander's hat. That's what I kind of feel with the cigar. It's not bad. With all the notes I explained, that's something you're intrigued about. Try it yourself. It is $57 per cigar. I don't think it's worth $57. I mean, I would try it again. Maybe with a glass of wine. Maybe it's something that's good with pairing. And you have this series that my good friend does, Eric, of Midnight Cigars, where every Sunday and Friday, I believe he does revisits on cigars that he already reviewed. I'm not going to bite off that dial for everything I have reviewed. You can look through all the content I ever uploaded. Let me know what cigars, especially this cigar, I should do a revisit down the line with the pairing. Maybe with a cup of coffee, maybe with a wine, maybe with a bourbon, maybe with a whiskey. I wouldn't mind revisiting some of the cigars with a pairing because I feel like it might bring the cigar out a little bit more. This, just as itself, seems kind of all right. I think it's just a very neutral cigar for me. How I tease in the beginning where one might like it more, the other one might hate it, and one might be neutral. It might be the case. I'm neutral to this. This is something that hey, if I see at a shop at the price, $57, three, four, five months down the line, I might get it. I might just get it for collector status, but I'm not going to buy a box of this. I feel like this is something that's not really for my palate, but it's not bad. 80% of Davidoff's cigar lines are complex when it comes to the flavor notes. This just seems a little bit, just not for me, but it's not bad. I hope you guys do enjoy today's review of the Davidoff Grand Cru Diamante Pinas. And if you are curious with other people's reactions to it, in the description, you will have both Eric of Midnight Cigars and Tony of Source House Assassin also doing a review of the cigar, which they released at the same time as I did. So after this video, please click on their videos and check out their reviews for it as well. For me, this might be running a six or seven range when it comes to my overall feeling towards it. Maybe someone else likes it. Maybe they all feel the same way. Maybe they all hate it. Who knows? Check in the description and find out. As always, guys, I love your faces and I'm out. Peace.